Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another club banger. Today, you read the title of the video, where an r slash that happened, and we're gonna read some stories that definitely were 100% true and all this stuff definitely happened. <laughs> Uh, this first one, though, I'm pretty sure is like a meme or a reference to something I don't understand, but let's just jump right into it. Never forget when my boyfriend of a year broke up with me out of nowhere the day before the big statistics exam, but I vowed to never let any man affect my academic performance, so I walked into that class with tears streaming down my face and still got the highest grade in the class. I'll be real, that probably, that's actually probably one of the most plausible ones that I've seen, like, you can definitely have somebody break up with you and go kill an exam, like, <laughs> I mean, I've had some weird life things happen, then I have to go take an exam. Exams don't stop for, like, life events, so... I mean, this could be true. It also could be a reference to something like a movie or something that I don't understand. If it is a reference to something, or if this is just like a meme that I haven't seen yet, let me know down below if I just got whooshed on this one. I guess I didn't get whooshed because I kind of called it out, but you know what I'm saying. Like, if you know the reference that this is making, let me know below so I can do some research on it. Random guy. Wow, what's that drink? It looks so good. Me? A vodka soda? Guy, can I try a sip of yours? Me, put your mouth on my straw and I will karate chop you in the effing throat. And that concludes our lesson on how to flirt with boys 101. Come again next weekend. <laughs> that didn't happen. I mean, I've seen creepy guys at the club do weird stuff, but this kind of thing seems like it's so not plausible. If you're just sitting there drinking a vodka soda by yourself, or like if you're with your friends, dudes don't just walk up and say, yo, let me get a sip on that. Yo, can I get a snap off that drink? So I was at McDonald's one day and I ordered a McFlurry and the person serving me called my number. So I went to get it and the woman dropped it on the floor. So I was like, okay, cool. And she made me another one. She passed it to me and dropped it again. She said, sorry, and went to go make another one. She came back and said, ma'am, the ice cream machine is broken. <laughs> Yeah, this one's super fake. <laughs> Ice cream machines don't break, like, uh, you guys are gonna combat me on this one, but they typically don't break after making a couple McFlurries, um, especially something like that. The reason, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down for y'all, because I used to work at McDonald's for a really long time, the reason that the ice cream machines break so much is they're not actually broken or down or like not working. What happens is these ice cream machines go through these heating cycles to kill the bacteria inside of them, but it's only because they aren't being cleaned regularly. There's only like typically one or two people at a McDonald's store that actually knows how to clean those machines. If they're cleaned regularly, they don't break down all that often. They're pretty bulletproof for the most part. It's just the fact that nobody there knows how to could just do regular maintenance on things. But you could usually get like five or six McFlurries out of a machine before it dies. I think this one is definitely a that happened because usually if the machine's broken, or like in quotation marks broken, it's broken broken. Like it doesn't just stay online and then all of a sudden stop working. Uh, it wouldn't just go into a heating cycle like that, like that quick. My friend just told me that his cousin who was allergic to peanuts one day during lunch said he couldn't take it anymore and wanted to know what a Reese's tastes like. So he ate the Reese's and stabbed himself with his EpiPen and told the teacher to call the hospital. What a legend. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen at all. That's fake as hell, dude. No self-respecting peanut allergy person would put themselves in that amount of danger because people with peanut allergies, I've never met somebody who has a mild peanut allergy because people with lactose intolerance, dude, They'll eat a pint of ice cream, they'll chug a gallon of milk, and just be like, I'll deal with it. Peanut allergies, like, the people with peanut allergies, like, come close to a little bit of peanut dust, and their airways close. <laughs> like, they get in full-on die mode, so that's just not how it goes down. Nobody's gonna put themselves in danger just to eat a effing Reese's peanut butter cup. I went to this girl's party the week after she cheated on my friend. While everyone was getting drunk AF, I went around stuffing tuna inside all the curtain rods, so like weeks went by, and they couldn't figure out why the house smelled like unholy festering death. They caught me through this video where these guys at the party were singing Take Me Home West Virginia, while I was in the background, full fingering a can of tuna to get every last piece of what would become rotting flesh. Yeah, this is not real. <laughs> it's not like you can- people aren't gonna notice you're walking around with a friggin' can of tuna, and you're pulling apart curtain rods and shoving stuff in them. There's no sly way you can do that, especially at a party. Like, people are gonna see you, you idiot. <laughs> like, even if people are super drunk, they're like, hey, why is she uh, dipping her fingers in a curtain rod? And why is she carrying around a smelly can of tuna? Yeah, that did not happen. My client had an entire head of lightener processing and decided at the exact moment she needed to leave. I went to the bathroom and she dipped. The next day she came in saying that I fried her hair off. Needless to say, she got banned from the salon and I got a bonus on my check. This story is fake. Nothing about it seems real. I had a really upsetting experience trying to help a homeless man. He was begging for money for food, and I had barely any cash but fresh groceries, same day purchase, and got an entire bag of foods that wouldn't spoil quickly and didn't need refrigeration or heating. 
I just put $2 in cash in the bag. And when I tried to give it to him, he dug through the bag, grabbed the money, and left all the food untouched. He was acting deaf. I knew sign language, but he clearly didn't know sign to back up a story. He seemed startled when I started signing fluently to him, and he had no idea what I was saying. So, the guy was faking deafness for pity and simplified communication just to get money out of people and their awkwardness from the language barrier. It really burned me from helping those who beg. I'd happily share food, but money no more. It's only used for alcohol and drugs in most cases. Whew. Yeah, this one is a, a hot pile of BS because I know if I had, like, homeless people, at least in my area, when I give them anything, they're grateful for it. They're super grateful for it. <laughs> and I think that's because it's a hard world out there and food helps. <laughs> food helps. I know sometimes people, I mean, realistically, sometimes people want to grab alcohol and stuff. But when you're out on the streets, man, that food can be a real help. And I think maybe this person may be even recently deaf, too. Like, we don't, we don't know this person's story. That guy could be recently deaf, and I mean, I'm arguing this on a that happened story, but this guy could have been recently deaf and just didn't know sign language yet. You know what I'm saying? But either way, especially the free kind. Tonight, a new Mexican restaurant. I only ordered one drink, or so I thought. At the end of the meal, the bill was presented without the itemized page. It seemed really high. I opened up the menu to double check the prices. Something didn't add up. I asked the manager to bring the detailed listing. It showed four drinks, so either I drank four drinks and my memory of everything was destroyed, or I was incorrectly being billed for someone else's Rita's. After a cordial visit with the manager, she decided to comp the entire meal, drink or drinks and all. Whatever I actually might have had to drink tonight, the margarita I remember was great and free. The most interesting man, I hope you're well, my friend. <laughs> yeah, this didn't happen, yo. Anytime I talk to somebody and I dispute a charge, they usually just take off the additional drinks. They're not gonna just give me free stuff because I decided to dispute a charge with them. If I tell them I only had the one drink and like food, they just change the bill most of the time. They're usually not like D-bags about it. They usually change it up and it's all good. They don't just give you free stuff unless they do something dramatically wrong. Ah, I'm dying. I was volunteering at the hospital, but there's a piano in one of the buildings that anyone can play. So I decided to play B Lasagna. And by the time I finished, there were like 15 people watching me and they all clapped when I finished. <laughs> Whatever, dude. I mean, I personally think that song is a is just a club banger. I think it was the I think it was the the jam that we all needed at that moment in time. But nobody's gonna stop and clap after that. Get out of here. Me. I'm not very hungry. I just want something easy. Server. Maybe the chicken strips for six dollars. Me. Maybe it does, but that doesn't help with my hunger. Random dad across the restaurant. Good one. <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. Nobody nobody makes those kind of jokes. That's not even a good dad joke, yo. This is a fake story. Fake news. Mom, you're so cool. You have three tattoos. Me, four. Four tattoos. Your tongue is pierced, your nose is pierced, your ears are pierced three times each. You are so cool. Me, sweet. No, this exchange didn't happen. Nobody, nope, sorry. Uh, nobody just has those kind of conversations with their mom. It just is, I don't go like, you count people's tattoos and be like, you're so cool. Oh my God, you're the best. It's not a conversation that mother, and child have together, just not a realistic thing. So yeah, definitely that happened. I just gave my name in Starbucks as the Lord be with you. When the barista shouted my name, half of the customers yelled, and also with you. And the other half of the customers shouted, and with your spirit. And it was a right ecumenical mess. Try it. No, <laughs> this didn't happen. Half of them and then the other half of them? No, nobody's gonna like, somebody calls out, oh, I have a, a venti white mocha for the Lord be with you. People are just gonna look at you like you're an idiot. A goldfish's job is to introduce kids to dying. Yes, I know some can live for a long time, but a lot of them don't. Or in my case, you get three. One of them eats the other two and lives for seven years after that. Goldfish superpowers. The fish died like three times and came back to life, I swear. Except for that, I swear that ain't even real, bruh. <laughs> when fishes die, they die. They don't do this half step and die thing where they like, are kind of dead, kind of alive. You are a, you sir are a liar and a cheat. Uh, no fish did that. Run, don't walk from this one. Following Common Sense's recommendation, I had my five-year-old watch it. Soon, my daughter started beating up her little sister, as Lilo beats up her school buddies. A la Disney tradition, this movie models bad behavior to later try and turn it into a positive moral. For my five-year-old, all she saw was that if you're mad, you can beat up others. <laughs> Lilo and Stitch, though? Ugh. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of comical violence in there. A little bit of silliness, but... I don't think it's anything, I just don't think it's inappropriate for a child five years and under. I mean, it's got good messages. And this definitely didn't happen. Your child didn't go start beating up kids after watching Lilo and Stitch. It's just, this not, no, just no. I applied for my passport today. My coworker was like, you never had a passport? 
I've had one since I was like four. I calmly turned around and said, isn't it great your family could afford opportunities like that? He literally bowed and left. And everyone clapped. <laughs> Yo, you aren't calling people out on their privilege, dude. That's just not, like, what is it called? What is this now, passport privilege? <laughs> it's not hard to get a passport. You take a picture and then you just renew it yearly and then you get your pictures updated every so often. <laughs> it's not because somebody had privilege. Uh, you could you can actually circumvent getting an ID and just go with the passport. Passports are actually a lot more there's a lot more usable than an ID is because an ID only applies at least in the United States in the United States. It doesn't apply anywhere else. It's not it's not a universally recognized form of identification. So, I mean, this person may have just foregone that and decided to stick with her passport instead of getting an ID later in life, but who knows. I had a friend who told a robber, "No, f off." when he asked for his phone and the robber got so shocked that my friend simply walked away unharmed. Someone once tried to carjack my mom, so she got in the passenger seat and started screaming at him that it wasn't okay. She didn't know him, it's her car. Dude looked at her like, you crazy bee, and ran off. And that's how my mom got her first cell phone and how my sister and I yelled at her for not just giving him the car. Neither of these stories happened. Here's the thing about robbers, right? You yell at them and say no and things like that, they just want the object, right? If you're robbing somebody or you're stealing something, you're in such a bad spot where you need to steal that thing or like you're klepto or whatever, but they want the item. They don't care about you. It doesn't matter how crazy you're being. I mean, most of the time, the robber mentality, at least from what I've heard, is that they don't want to kill people. They just want the thing. So do what they tell you to do because you can replace a car, but you can't replace you, right? So let's say the robber went crazy and snapped that mom's neck or like attacked her. That could have turned out significantly worse, and I mean, it, it's just not realistic. That wouldn't happen like that. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning into this episode of That Happened. If y'all have any subreddits you'd like to suggest, remember, always leave that in the comment section below. And you already know where this is going. No glove. No love. Peace.